All right, let's do this. Five questions, 25 points tomorrow. Why? Oh, five questions. That's not a lot. Did you just see us do this lateral area question? Okay, these things take a while. One of the questions will be multiple choice, and it will be on cross sections. That's where cross sections comes up. Uh, problem number one, multiple choice, cross sections. I can guarantee every single figure we've done, prism, pyramid, cone, cylinder, will be on there tomorrow. Now, will I just have a separate one for each? No. I'm going to jam those suckers together and say find the surface area. All right. Again, if you look back at your notes, we did one at the end of class every day. And there's also one, I believe, at the end of your review right here. So something you're going to see a bunch of these tomorrow. Okay. You're going to see a bunch of those. All right. What's the surface area? Please do not find everything. You've got to remember you cannot count what's being covered up, right? You cannot count what's being covered up. I would like to go over number five with you right now. All right. So go to number five. We can assume the base is regular here. Assume the base is regular. So my first question is, what is this figure? What polyhedron are we talking about here? Uh, 24, what are we talking about here? You don't need to have an official name, but just in general, what is that polyhedron? <laughs> pyramid, yes. It is a pyramid. What shapes the base? Hexagon. So it's a hexagonal pyramid. So we're going to find the surface area. How many triangles does the uh, faces form? Six triangular faces, all at one half base times height. Plus, and here we go, I'm going to put big B, whatever the area of that hexagon is. Okay, whatever the area of the hexagon is. So you got your lateral area by multiplying by six, surface area adding in the hexagonal base. All right, let's do the lateral area here because I think that's going to be easy for us. Six times one half. Again, I am taking one of these triangular faces and finding the area of it. What's the base? It's already there. What's the base? Four. And what about its height? The height on that triangle. Not the height of the pyramid. The height on that triangle is what? Ten. That's slant height. That's what we talk about with slant height. Mission impossible height, the altitude, that comes straight down from the apex. Plus, all right, we got to do some work now. Here's where the work comes in. Let me bust out a hexagon here. Turn it around. All right, ready? Help me find what capital B is here. How do I find the area of that hexagon just giving a side of four? Going back to last unit, dig up a little bit of last unit. From the center, if I draw in to each vertice, a radius into each vertice, how many triangles am I going to form? Six triangles. Again, all of them have one half base times height. Everyone agree the base is four of this triangle? All right, now I need your help. Here's the hard part. What is the height of that triangle? What's your moves now? What's your moves? What's up? Well, um, it'd be by three, 16 by six. Find the central angle right here first. Find this central angle. And yes, 360 divided by six congruent triangles. That'll be a 60 degree angle. What's the height doing to it? Bisecting it. And also keep in mind, this is where I see mistakes. Not only is it bisecting that central angle, what else is that height bisecting? The moon, the base. Don't use four. Um, here's my, cause here's my worry. Some of you guys are gonna put the four like it's there. Oh, I'll use four. No, 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 no. The whole side is four. The height bisects it. So now you're dealing with the two. Now, how do I find the height? And, I, and this might be bad news for some of you, and sorry, get over it. You're not going to be able to use sine, cosine, tangent tomorrow to find the height because um, my directions are going to say 
simplest radical form. So your answer has to have a radical in it. And doing sine, cosine, tangent won't do that for you tomorrow. I need to know the rules. That's what I'm trying to push to you. What is the rule to go from the shorter to the longer? What's my height going to be here if my shorter is two? Three. Come on, Eva. So the height, longer leg will be what? Shorter leg is two. My height, which is also my longer leg, will be what? Two radical three. Not some decimal that you got from sine, cosine. Two radical three. So there is big B, six times one half times four times two radical three. I know your directions say nearest whole number or tenth. I don't know, but I'm telling you tomorrow it'll say, leave your answer in simplest radical form. So let's talk about what do I do with all this now. I think I get 120 here, right? No. Yeah, 120. Plus, leave the radical in the answer. That's why I said simplest radical form. What do you do with the rest? Multiply, 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 multiply. What's your deal? Um, just a quick question. Why yeah. did you um, put two radical three? Here? Uh, yeah. Because that was the height. So I took one triangle out of the hexagon. The base was four, and the height, the longer leg, was two radical three. Oh, wouldn't it be four radical three? No, 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 no. Here's 30. What's across from the 30? Two. Because the, oh, remember, that yeah. that lot, that height bisects that side, right. right? That's a two, so that's why that's two radical three. All, right. Got All good? Okay. So when you guys multiplied here, what did we end up with? Three and four is 12, 24. Did I do that right? Yeah, I think I, yeah. Done? Or one more step, simplest radical form. Done, or do I go 144 radical three? Done? Yes, why, why can I not combine? This does not have a radical three. Don't embarrass me next year. Square second. So that would be my answer in simplest radical form tomorrow. So yes, you do need your 30, 60, 45, 45 rules. Sine, cosine, tangent cannot be used if it's a simplest radical form. Anything else? Last comment. I'm not doing this problem with you, but please go to number nine. Just so we know where these dimensions are actually going, you got the world's largest ice cream cake. It's a rectangular prism. This, this is the world's largest ice cream cake right there for you. Okay. Nothing to do with the actual problem, but if anybody wanted the visual, a little Dairy Queen, there it is. All right. Massive. Everything but the bottom is covered with frosting. So I, I, I need you guys to know what's the dimensions of the bottom, right? 19 by nine. That's the, that's the bottom. That's the base, the length of the width. So 19 by nine, the two's telling you how high it is, two feet. All right. And I'm putting frosting on everything but the bottom, which is 19 by 9. Everything else just gets slatted and frosting. It's probably going to be vanilla because that's the only way you go. Don't even argue with me. All right. Maybe some funfetti frosting you could put on, but chocolate, lemon, strawberry. <laughs> outside looking in like i could handle the cream cheese buttercream like the yellowish kind i'm all right with that any kind of resemblance of the yellow of the uh vanilla family i'm okay with chocolate no thanks 
Vanilla cake, vanilla frosting. Only way to go. Caitlin, yes, ba my basic girl over here, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, there you go, yep. Vanilla, vanilla. Any other questions? Okay, start it up. Answers are up on Classroom. And I only put the answers up because this is an assignment for tomorrow that I'm checking. All right, this is an assignment tomorrow that I'll be checking before I hand out the quiz. Sure, Paul, go right in. If you don't know where my answer came from on the key, because yours doesn't match, let me know.